All right, the next thing you want to do, once you have it marked on this fitting, you have this tube glued in. I glued this reducing fitting sliver on. I went through and put in the plate marked where I want to drill my holes. And again, the holes are going to be on one side of the plate, not right down through the middle of the plate, but on one side of it. You want to drill the holes. The ho this is where the air is going to go into the vortex tube itself. The air will be around in this volume created by this in this area. It's going to go into this area through these holes and into the tubes on one side of the plate. When it goes through these holes you want it to swirl around so you don't want to drill the hole straight through the center of the tube like this. You want to drill the hole off to the side at an angle and you want to drill more than one hole. How many holes and what diameter they are depends on the inner diameter of your tube, depends on the hole in your plate, how long the tubes are, how much air you can put through there, and a bunch of other things. There's a chart on my blog with rules of thumb about how big all these tubes should be and the holes and the diameters and how many and all that stuff. So the way I normally do this so that I'm not drilling straight through the center, I'm drilling off on a tangent, is to clamp the tube in the vise, look where my hole is, and kind of spot drill it. just to get it started. Then loosen it up and rotate the tube around slightly. And then go back into that same spot and drill at an angle. So we're going tangent to the tube. We're not going straight into it, we're going in a tangent. The reason I drill that first starting hole is because the drill tends to slip off if you don't do that. So you drill through and do that all the way around. So you're going to get a bunch of holes that are coming in at an angle, tangent. So when the air goes in it swirls around. The next thing you want to do is you got to have a way to get air into this cavity, into this area. So what I did is I drilled a hole in the end of this larger fitting and I sized it so that a pipe fitting on one end and a tube fitting on the other, this kind of coupling for NPT to a tube fits in there snugly and makes its own threads as I turn it in. So you get that on there, get it started, crank it around with a wrench, put some glue, put some Teflon tape, whatever, and glue that in. You want to make sure that it doesn't stick in too far into the inside of this because when this whole thing's assembled you don't want it to hit this outer coupling and block off the airflow. The air is going to come in here, fill this area around the outside here, and escape through these holes that you drill into here to get into this center tube and spiral down to the end. Okay, once you have all the holes drilled in this coupling, they're drilled through this coupling on one side of the plate, and you've drilled them all the way around, then what you can do is drop your plate in there, take your other pipe, other piece of tube, put in and glue it in place so that that plate with the hole in it is captured between these two pieces of pipe. Everything's glued up at this point. Also glued on these pieces of the reducing coupling on each end. So now what you do is you got to drill out these holes because this pipe now that it's been pushed in there against the plate is blocking the holes. So you get a drill, go through, drill out each one of these into the center and again making sure that you're drilling at an angle tangent to the pipe. You don't want to drill straight through the middle of the pipe. You want to be off to the edge with all of these holes. So you drill all these holes out. Then once you've done that you can apply glue, PVC glue to the, the two reducing couplings on the end here and slide over the larger coupling which should fit over these because it's filed because it's been filed out it'll slip over and put your pipe fitting in. So what happens is the air goes in through this pipe fitting 
it goes into this area around here, into this volume, fills this up, and then goes through each one of these holes into the pipe. Because of the plate there, and the angle at which the air is going in, it causes the air to swirl around and move one direction down the, the vortex tube. So that's basically how the vortex chamber is put together. Here's one that I made about a year ago, uh, the one that was in my blog originally. All done the same way. Here's all the pipe fittings, everything put together, just like this one was. That's what's going on inside there with the, the fitting screwed on the end. So the air is going into here, hitting the, going through the holes, hitting that plate, swirling around, and heading down to the other end of the tube, which at this end has a valve on it essentially. It's called a valve. But in my case, what I did is I glued up some more PVC pipe, which at this point should be pretty obvious how I did it, by cutting the fittings, the reducer fittings. And then I put a Stayco clamp on the end of here and a, a tapered piece of wood so that when I actuate the clamp, the piece of wood goes in there and it's tapered and it blocks off the air completely when it's all the way in. By pulling the clamp out, it draws that wood dowel out, the tapered wood dowel, and allows me to change essentially the effective open area of this end of the pipe. So the air as it's traveling down the tube is swirling around the outsides of the tube, primarily around the outsides on a vortex, hence the name. And when it gets to this end, depending on where this point is positioned, some of that air escapes around the outside of this and comes out. The hot air does, primarily. The cold air basically hits the end of this valve, is more into the center of the vortex, and starts moving back down the other direction in the tube. So around the outside of the tube you got the swirling hot air. This causes the colder air, which is in the middle, to start moving in the opposite direction. It's coming down this way, and because of that plate in there with the small hole in the center, the hot air is going this way around the outside again. The cold air goes down through the hole in the middle of that little plastic plate and out the cold end of the tube. So what you get is air going in here, cold air coming out that way, and the hot air coming out the area around this. Typically these things are adjustable. I just did it this way because I had these parts lying around the garage. You don't have to use something like this. Some people put a stand back here in a bolt, a tapered bolt. You can do whatever you want. Uh, once you get it adjusted for your particular airflow and the temperatures that you like, you could probably just set it there and leave it there. Never have to mess with it again. There you go. A do-it-yourself homemade vortex tube out of PVC pipe. It took me all said and done maybe two hours to make this.